Hey guys, welcome to this video on the walkthrough for the 2019 uh, level 2 um, 2019 calculus paper. Uh, I actually don't have the marking schedule for this paper, uh, it doesn't get released until next year, so um, some of the, uh, whether it's an achieved merit or excellence question, I'm not too sure, so I'm just going to make a few um, generalizations, I'm going to make a guess on whether a question is excellence merit or achieved, because I don't actually have the marking schedule, and because of all the controversy, um, I'm not sure how they're going to change the marking schedule, so I'm just going to make some assumptions on whether a question is achieved merit or excellence. So don't take my word for whether, uh, which grade you should be getting for each question. But I just walk through the general, um, uh, walking through the general, um, how to do the questions, uh, in this exam, eh? So question one, a function f is given by f of x equals to x to the power of 4 plus 3x squared minus 17. Use calculus to find the gradient of the graph of the function at the point where x equals to 2. So that's a pretty uh, standard question. So we're going to differentiate and make equal uh, to differentiate to find our gradient function and then make x equals to 2 to find our gradient at that point at x equals to 2. So if we have here, we have our f dash of x equals to 4x to the power of 3 plus 6x. And f dash of 2, we just substitute our 2 in. Uh, plus 6 times of 2, and that should give you a gradient of 44, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, should give you an answer of 44. And this question, I'm pretty, um, 95% sure it's an achieved question here. Find the coordinates of the points on the graph of the function y equals to 4x cubed minus 4x plus 4, where the tangent of a curve is parallel to the line of uh, y, uh, y minus 8x plus 6 equals to 0. So when, uh, sub, when a line is parallel to another line, so for example, I draw two parallel lines, uh, one thing you should notice is that the gradient will be the same for both of these. So the rise over run will be the same for both of these lines because if the rise over run is not the same, then they'll eventually they'll meet somewhere. Because the rise over run is the same, they increase at the same rate. Therefore, they're just going to be exactly that far apart no matter, no matter what. So that gradient will be the same. So um, in order to do this question, okay, we're going to rearrange this equation to get uh, y equals to something something instead of y minus 8x plus 6 equals to 0. You want the equation of the straight line. So we have y equals to 8x minus 6. Uh, that's our equation of the, straight, uh, of the straight line that the tangent is parallel to. And notice that the gradient here is 8. So gradient is 8. Oh, sorry. Alright, so we have a function here, we want to differentiate to get our gradient function, so dy over dx, that equals to 12x squared minus 4. Alright, so we want to find tangents to the curve of 4x cubed minus 4x plus 4, where the gradient equals to 8. So we're going to substitute our dy over dx as 8, and we're going to solve our equation. So 8 equals to 12x squared minus 4. If we make equal to 0, we should get 0 equals to 12x squared minus 12. And if we plug this into our um, calculator, so to our polynomial, so 12, 0, and negative 12, we should get uh, x equals to negative 1 or x equals to positive 1. So that's the two, that's the two x points where the tangent uh, has a gradient of 8. Uh, however, the question asks you to find the coordinates. So we're going to substitute both x equals to 1 and x equals to negative 1 in order to find our um, the points at where the... Um, where the tangent is. So y of 1 should give you 4, 1 to the power of 3 minus 4 times of 1 plus of 4. Alright, so that basically that simplifies to 4 minus 4 plus 4, which equals to 4. So we have our uh, one, 1 tangent at the point 1, 4, and one, y of negative 1 that equals to 4 times of negative 1 cubed minus 4 times of negative 1 plus of 4. And that simplifies to negative uh, 4 plus 4 uh, plus 4. And that also equals to 4. So our second tangent is at negative, negative 1, 4. And that should, be your, um, that should be your final answer. So this here and this here. Uh, I think getting uh, both of these points it should lead, give you a merit grade for getting both of these points correctly. So for both points, both points you should get a um, merit grade 
And again, achieve grade, I think if you just find this values here, you should get an achieve grade. Um, if I'm thinking through logically, I'm not sure though, don't, don't trust me on this one, but I'm just, I'm just thinking that this is probably your achieve point here, and to get both points, you'll get a merit grade. Don't quote me on that. <laughs> Alright, so Sophie is blowing up a balloon. The volume of a balloon is given by a volume equals to 4 over 3 pi r cubed, where V is the volume of the balloon in centimeters cubed, and R is the radius in centimeters. Uh, find the radius of the balloon when the rate of change of the volume with respect to the radius is 25 pi centimeters cubed over centimeters. So a rate of change of volume with respect to a radius. So that's volume changing with respect to radius. That is dV over dR equals to 25 pi. That equals to 25 pi. We have V here. We have V equals to um, 4 over 3 pi r cubed. If we differentiate that, we'll get dV over dR. So if we differentiate uh, the volume, we'll get dV over dR equals to 3 times 4 over 3 becomes 4. 4 pi and then 3 becomes 2, so 4 pi r squared. And we want to find the radius when the rate of change, which is dv over dr, is 25 pi. So we're going to substitute our dv over dr as 25 pi, and that equals to our 4 pi r squared. The two pi's cancel out, so you get 25 over 4 equals to r squared. So the square root of 25 over 4 should give you your r. And I think that should give you your r value, should come out to be uh, r equals to 2.5 centimeters as your final answer there. Uh, again, I think for this question, um, I'm not too sure, but I think this might be a merit level question. So a merit for finding the radius and uh, in terms of an achieved, um, an achieved, um, it's a tough one. I'm not too sure. Achieved. Maybe forming an equation for uh, uh, solving an equation to solve for r, maybe up to here you'll get an achieved grade, perhaps. Yeah, I'm not too sure, but yeah. Uh, use calculus to find the quadratic function of x that has the following properties. A rate of increase, a gradient of 7 when x equals to 0, a turning point when x equals to 1, and a value of negative 20 when x equals to 4. Alright, so we're looking at a quadratic function. Okay, so basically when f dash of x equals to... Uh, 7 when x equals to 0, that's the first bullet point. The second bullet point, uh, at the turning point where x equals to 1, turning point, the gradient is 0, so we have our f dash of x will equal to 0 when x equals to 1. And we also have a value of negative 20 when x equals to 4. So a value of negative 20, that doesn't refer to the gradient, that refers back to our, our function. So basically, uh, um, f of x equals to negative 20, when x equals to 4. And that's the information we get in order to solve the question. Alright, so the easiest way to do this question is um, the quadratic function. You know a quadratic function can be rewritten as um, ax squared plus bx plus c. So we can just say our opening statement, we can, see, uh, we can say let the... Oh, why am I using that pen? Um, so we can say let the quadratic... Uh, we can let it be um, ax squared plus bx plus c. So we can let this be our quadratic formula. So we can say our f of x is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. So therefore, our f dash of x, so our differentiated form, would be 2ax plus b. Alright, so we have our information here. So we have our... When x equals to 0, our f dash of x equals to 7. So when x equals 0, f dash of x equals 7. So 7 equals to 2a times of 0 plus b. So you should see immediately, you should see that 7 equals to b as 2a times 0 is 0. So we have our b value is 7. So we can write our f dash of x equals to 2ax plus 7. And we also know that the f dash of x has turning point when x equals to 1. So when f dash of x equals to 0, x equals to 1. So 2a times of 1 plus 7. So if you move the 7 to the other side, we'll get negative 7. Sorry. We'll get negative 7 equals to 2a. So hence, we have also found our a value should be negative 3.5.
All right, so now that we have our a and our b values, we can use our last bullet point in order to find our c value, which is in our um, c value, which is in the function formula. Okay, so f of x, we can rewrite it now as equals to negative 3.5x squared uh, plus 7x plus c. And now all we have to do is substitute our last point. So when, uh, <coughs> when x equals to 4, f of x equals to negative 20. So negative 20 equals to negative 3.5 times 4 squared plus 4, 7 times of 4 plus c. And this should simplify. We should get our c value as 8, but just let me double check here. So we have negative 56 plus 28 plus c equals negative 20. So negative 28 plus c equals to negative 20. So therefore, our c value, sh uh, sorry, we'll continue up here. So our c value should be 8. So now that you have your a, b, and c, you can rewrite your um, f of x. So you can write our final answer, f of x equals to negative 3.5x squared um, plus, uh, plus 7x plus 8. And that should be your final answer for this question. Uh, this question should be an excellence level question. So if you get all the way up to here, I'm thinking you should get a T grade. Uh, in terms of getting a merit grade, I'm thinking if you find both the A and the B values by using two bullet points. So if you use this bullet point and this bullet point, and you get B and A, you should get yourself a merit grade, in my opinion. So a merit grade for finding uh, both A and B, and probably an achieved grade for achieve grade for maybe just finding one of the values. So achieve grade for finding the A value or the B value. So either one for an, for an achieved. All right, moving on. So the graphs of g of x equals to x cubed minus ax squared plus six, and h of x is equal to two x squared plus bx plus 13, uh, touch when x equals to negative one. So common tangent at the point of contact. Use calculus to find the coordinates of the point of contact for the two graphs. Okay, so the information given, you have um, g of x, oh, no, red pen. Um, you have g of x, and you equals to x cubed minus 2a, oh my gosh, sorry, I'm not getting it. So you have um, g of x equals to x cubed minus ax squared plus 6, and you have h of x equals to 2x squared plus bx plus 13. Alright, so this question tells you that the graphs touch when x equals to negative 1, so this, when they say touch, that means they're equal at x equals to negative 1. So you can say that g of negative 1 is equal to h of negative 1. And they also tell you they have a common tangent at the point of contact. So a common tangent means that they have the tangent with the same, um, with the same gradient. Okay? So basically that also tells you that the gradients at x equals to negative 1 are both equal at h of x and g of x. Because the common tangent refers to the gradient of the tangent will be the same. And if the gradient of the tangent is the same, that means our two, two graphs must have, the same tan no, must have the same gradient at x equals to negative 1. So we also know that g dash of negative 1 will equal to h dash of negative 1. So this is a big simultaneous equation. Okay, so basically, uh, if we differentiate real quickly, we have g dash of x equals to 3x squared minus 2ax. And we will have our h of x and h dash of x, i equals to 4x plus b. Right, so we know that um, g dash of negative 1 equals to h dash of negative 1. So g, so basically, sorry, so we can just write, write this as 3, negative 1 squared minus 2a times of negative 1 equals to 4 times of negative 1 plus b. And that will simplify to 3, here, yeah, 3, 3 plus 2a equals to negative 4 plus b. So, for example, we can just rewrite this as 7 plus 2a equals to b. Alright, we also know that g of 1 is equal to h of 1. So, if we say uh, 1 cubed minus a times of 1 cubed. Oh, sorry, negative 1. What am I doing? It's negative 1. <sighs> okay, so negative 1 cubed minus a times of negative 1 squared plus 6 is equal to 2 times of negative 1 squared plus b times of negative 1 plus 13. Alright, so negative 1 cubed is still negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1, uh, times negative a is negative a, plus 6 equals 2. Negative 1 squared is 2, sorry, no. 
negative 1 squared is positive 1 times the 2 is 2. b times negative 1 is minus b, and then plus the 13. So if we just do a bit of rearranging here, 5 minus a equals to 15 minus b. So therefore, we should have 5 equals to 15 minus b plus a. So therefore, 5, uh, negative 10, negative 10 plus b equals to a. Alright, so now we have our, uh, we can have our two equations, our two simultaneous equations. So we have negative 10 plus b equals to a, we have 7 plus 2a equals to b. So we can put a as negative 10 plus b into this 7 plus 2a. So we say 7 plus of um, 2 times of negative 10 plus b, that equals to b. And then we can solve for this equation, so 7 plus negative 20 plus 2b equals to b. So therefore, we can say negative 13 equals to negative b. So therefore, our b value should be 13. Uh, if our b value is 13, then we should get that our a value should become, so basically, we can use this equation again, so negative 10 plus 13 plus 13 equals to a, so therefore our a is equal to 3. Alright, so now we have our a and our b values, we can find our coordinates of the point of contact. So a coordinates of the point of contact that refers to the, that refers to a function, not the gradient function. The question asks for coordinates, so when you see coordinates, you should automatically just go directly to the um, uh, normal function. So we're going to substitute our negative 1 into any one of these graphs, because h of x is a bit uh, less less powers, and I'll, I'll probably use h of x. So if we substitute our b is 13, we should get h of x equals to 2x squared plus 13x plus 13. So basically, we're going to find out h of negative 1, that equals to 2 times of negative 1 squared, plus 13 times of negative 1 plus 13. These two cancel out. So we'll say that h of negative 1 equals to 1 squared is 1, squared is one. 1 times 2 is 2, so it's equal to 2. So our coordinates would be, so co coordinates would be negative 1, 2. And that would be your uh, final answer here. And once again, I'm pretty 95% um, sure this would be an excellence level question. If you can find your um, coordinates. In terms of getting a merit grade, um, merit grade, hmm. I'm saying that you probably still need to find both B and A. So if you get both B and A, I think you'll get a merit grade. And to get an achieved grade, I'm thinking if you can, um, if you differentiate it correctly, I'm sure that you'll be able to, if you get differentiated correctly, and maybe one expression for A in terms of B, maybe here, or maybe uh, maybe just differentiating correctly can get you an achieved. Yeah. All right, so that's question one for the calculus exam. I'll be back in the next video, uh, next video for question two and um, question two and another video separately for question three. All right, thank you for watching and stay tuned for the next one.